Let's move a little bit further west and look at another important part of the world in terms of physical gold demand. I'm talking about the Middle East and even over into Turkey. Uh, what do you see happening there in this, uh, at this moment in time? I have to admit I have some difficulty with the Middle East. It's extremely difficult to get uh, online or real time uh, gold prices there. Uh, you can in Turkey. Turkey was more or less knocked out of the world gold market in 2008 by forces which we have various explanations for, but they do seem to have come back in a reasonable degree and you can watch the premiums and they were reasonable buyers in July by uh, very recent standards. However, they're still way below the 220, 250 ton a year annual pace that they used to absorb gold in. Um, of course, you've got to ask to bear in mind that a large proportion of the uh, buying in the Gulf is actually buying by non-resident resident Indians. Uh, so, to some extent, the prices in India ref give some um, insight into what's going on in the Gulf, too. Yeah, some indication in terms of what gold prices in the Gulf are at any moment in time. In other words, if, if India is a discount, then it's liable that uh, probably that, uh, it's not, uh, the, the Gulf is at a discount, too. What factors uh, basically have a negative impact on gold uh, consumption or gold acquisition in, uh, in India? Is um, the currency the, the major component, or are there other things as well? Currency is very important, and when the stock market is strong and foreign portfolio investment in India is strong, and the reserve, if the Reserve Bank of India allows the currency go, to go up, that's a very bullish point for, uh, for gold. Um, the seasonal factor is very pronounced. Uh, there's a lot of discussion about whether the, a good or bad harvest is important, but I've never been able to see myself that it makes much difference. Mm -hmm. There's a fair amount of India that's uh, somewhat industrialized now and they probably in terms of disposable income is disproportionately influential in the gold market. Has there been any movement toward paper gold products as opposed to physical gold products? At the end of the day, physical is still more important. Uh, the movement towards paper products is, is minimal. Uh, the Indians really seem to like having physical gold in their possession. It's a cultural, traditional thing? seems very deep-rooted. It also affects the gold market in various countries where there is a significant non-resident Indian population, including the United States, where there's a substantial amount of, India, of gold is bought uh, on the eastern seaboard by, by Indians. Mm -hmm. And then sent back to relatives for weddings and things of that nature? Sometimes, or perhaps hoarded. It's not something that they publicly discuss. What they oh, do I see. It. You mean kept outside of India yeah. by non-resident Indians? Yes. I mean, what they do with it is... Uh, who knows, but the fact is they do buy it and it affects the, the local gold markets quite significantly. Yeah. Is the made, you know, we talk about Indian demand, but it's really demand that's driven by monetary purposes, is it not? In, in other words, you know, in the West we buy coins and bars because gold is money. Uh, in India, because of cultural and traditional reasons, they buy gold fabricated in terms of high carat jewelry. But it is a monetary demand, isn't yes, it? Yes, they're extremely insistent that uh, jewelry, no matter how beautifully it be, be worked, uh, is high, very high carat. Mm -hmm. uh, they simply will not buy the sort of stuff that can be sold in America and uh, in Europe. Mm -hmm. So the adornment I, I, aspect it, is just a secondary benefit as opposed to the monetary it aspect? Seems to, be, to them it seems to be a store of wealth. Mm -hmm. Passed on from generation to generation. Portable and ultra-discreet store of wealth. Yeah. They're very interested in the discretion aspect of it, it appears.